And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. How stupid can you get? How stupid can you get? Story from the Associated Press. How stupid can you get? Dateline St. Louis. Two prayer services will be held at St. Louis gas stations to thank God for lower fuel prices. And God's on the case again. And I ask if they continue to drop. <laughs> You're just stupid if you believe this. And who do I think is the stupidest? Here he is, Daryl Alexander. Midwest co-chair of a movement he calls Pray at the Pump. He said prayer gatherings will be held Monday afternoon and evening at a mobile station west of downtown St. Louis. Participants say they plan to buy gas, pray, and then sing the song We Shall Overcome with a new verse. And the verse is we'll have lower gas prices. Someday. Oh, you got to be kidding me. An activist, it says here, from the Washington, D.C. area, Rocky Twyman. Rocky Twyman. Started the effort saying if politicians couldn't lower gas prices, it was time to ask God to intervene. The group thinks the prayer is helping, saying prices are starting to fall below $4 a gallon. Oh, my. How ignorant can people possibly be? Seriously. Let's talk about why gas prices go higher and why they go lower. So you ignorant people who believe in preying on these things will understand. And then not waste your time driving down to the gas station to sing We Shall Overcome, okay? There's a variety of reasons why gasoline prices go up. One of them is the fact there's a limited amount of oil in the world. And we have um, fast-growing economies of formerly moribund economies, uh, out of formerly moribund economies in countries, very large countries, China, India, Brazil. All of these countries are growing by leaps and bounds. And when the economy grows by leaps and bounds, they need commodities. They need oil, yes, corn, sugar, pork bellies, steel, copper, you name it. The more competition there is in the world for these increasingly scarce commodities, the higher the prices go. There is a second and more important reason why the price of an oil barrel goes up. And that is, we have a declining dollar. Let me make this really simple. 
The president wants to go to Iraq for seven years, whatever it's been. He wants to uh, go to war. But we don't have enough money in the budget to pay for the war. At the same time, he wants to tell you that he's going to lower taxes, thereby lowering the amount of money available to fight a war by even more. When there isn't enough money to fight the war, the government doesn't just not pay its bills. So what it does is it prints more dollars so that it can pay for all the militia, all the military hardware, the transport of all these people, the bombs, the planes, what have you. When more dollars are printed... This is simple economics. It's not complicated. When more dollars are printed, the value of each dollar is less. Less dollars, more value. More dollars, less value. Same thing with the stock market. Lehman Brothers this week announced that they're going to, they're going to issue $8.5 billion in new stock. So what happened to Lehman Brothers stock? It dropped like a rock. Why? Well, because when they sell $8.5 billion in new stock at the current price, that means the value of each share of existing stock is worth less. I mean, if you had 5 million shares, they were all worth $10. And the next week you got 10 million shares. Well, the company isn't suddenly worth double. That means that all of the people who currently own stock own stock that is now worth less. And the same thing happens with dollars. The more dollars you print, the more inflation you have. The more dollars you print, the more debt we go into. The more dollars you print, the less the dollar is worth against other major currencies like the euro or the British pound. Even if the price of a barrel of oil stays the same, in local currency, wherever that might be, Saudi Arabia or um, Venezuela or wherever, if it stays the same in their currency, if, if our currency is worth less of their currency, the price in deflated, I'm sorry, in inflated dollars goes up. So you're not being, oh yeah, they lowered your taxes and they're not taxing you uh, anymore to pay for the war and blah, blah, blah. But the, but the, it's this insidious tax that makes the dollar worth less. Every dollar you have is worth less than it was seven years ago. By a mile. By a mile. Don't believe it? Check into a hotel in London, England and order a Coca-Cola. Do you tell me if you find one for less than five bucks? Sounds kooky, doesn't it? But it's true. So... The more the dollar declines, the more the price of a gallon of gasoline goes up. The more the dollar declines, the the price of everything starts going up. Why? Because if a dollar is worth less, uh, people have to charge more dollars to get the same value for what they're charging you. Airfares go up. Gasoline, yes, goes up. The price of commodities goes up. The list is long. Food, price of food goes up. Now, there's a lot of other things going on, and I could sit here and tell you about them all day, but the bottom line is that the price of gasoline is going up and down according to world supply and demand, the value of the dollar, and it's also going up and down according to how much people are using, and less and less Americans are driving as many miles as they were. Demand is less, not because people are doing something righteous, Demand is less because people said, you know what, I can't put $100 worth of gas in my tank and drive away for the 4th of July weekend. And the more people, have you noticed the traffic isn't as bad as it used to be? More and more people are taking public transportation or riding a bicycle or uh, taking less uh, car trips. It's just that simple. I saw a headline in a newspaper the other day that said, the new vacation hotspot, your backyard. Well, if people start using less gasoline, guess what happens to the price of gasoline? It goes down. I don't believe the government should be controlling the price of gasoline. I don't believe that the uh, the oil companies uh, necessarily control the price of gasoline. 
I think it's much bigger than that. And the people who are praying at the pump, the people who are singing We Shall Overcome, and the people who are yelling and screaming at politicians about doing something about this, they're just naive. You know, if you want to have gasoline, gasoline should be uh, priced at whatever the market will bear and uh, based on how much supply there actually is. We don't want rationing. They have to charge $6 a gallon for gasoline, and that's what they have to do. And uh, a lot of people are just going to have to cut back, and that's the way it is. And there is no fairness about it. That's what a free market is all about, folks. So I think anybody who goes out and prays for higher gas or for lower gas prices is a moron. You are naive. You are uneducated. You are ignorant. You are wasting your time. Uh, if there were a God, which I don't believe there is, God would not be uh, up there like my favorite Marshall, you know, deciding how to uh, raise and lower the price of gasoline. By the way, why did God sit on his thumbs and let the price go so high, folks? I mean, praying for the price of gasoline to get lower, isn't that just the stupidest thing you've ever heard? 1 800 like this. Five eight hundred Tom Likus Likus eight six six Tom Likus Likus one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. I just wanted to tell you who my favorite girlfriend is. Who is that? The next one. <laughs> <laughs> the Tom Likus Show. <laughs> Tom, that's our telephone number. Yes, a group in St. Louis pray that God will lower fuel prices. They're stupid, right? Stupid. It's Wes on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Papa Bear. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm glad to be on the on the phone with you. I'm a longtime listener. I appreciate everything you say. You speak the truth and just keep doing what you're doing. I certainly will. <laughs> I just want to say these religious cats, man, they always make me laugh. They're always doing funny stuff all or you know, all the time. But let's say there is a God just for a minute. Alright? Now, this God, this all knowing God, gave us a moron for a president who sent us to war pretty much mostly for oil and maybe a couple other, you know, uh, revenge factors or whatever. And now he's going to listen to some hoo-hahs over in St. Louis or wherever and drop our oil prices, which we caused ourselves? Seriously? Well, that's my point. I mean, first of all, was it God's idea for us to drive around in cars and use oil? Yeah, uh, you have soccer moms in eight-seater, uh, you know, Escalade and crap. You know, driving around by themselves with maybe two bags from Ralph's. I carry I carry five bags from Ralph's home every day. You know, every day I go shopping on my Honda Nighthawk that gets 50 miles to the gallon. I can give a crap what the gas price is these days. I drive a fuel-efficient vehicle. Well, uh, the fact is, uh, but most people out there, most people out there, the last several years, they've been buying SUVs of all sizes, trucks, pickup trucks. And um, it would take a moron to think that uh, gasoline was going to stay under $2 a gallon forever. Exactly. You're so right. And, and like, I don't know. I just, I, and I love the fact that you brought up the empty freeways. Trust me, I'm enjoying that. There's less, you know, people out there to hit me while I'm on my motorcycle. And, you know, you know, while I'm driving a fuel-efficient vehicle and I don't feel the gas pinch that these other guys in their SUVs do, I'm loving it. I gotta, I gotta admit it. I'm loving the gas prices right now. They empty the roads for me. Yeah, I mean, uh, but let's have uh, Europe's gas prices eight dollars a gallon. Yeah, they're they're dying over there, but they have way more smart cars too. They have cars shorter than I am. <laughs> well, I've seen the smart cars, and the smart cars, by the way, are not as energy efficient as they appear. Uh, what what the smart car does is it, in Europe, where there's very little parking. And almost no parking lots, by the way, not like we have. Um, that they fit into tiny spaces. 
Right. Yeah, I've actually heard that a lot of the alternative fuels are, you know, are causing, you know, more problems than they're worth. So, you know, there's we have more to look into that. Um, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta head out here. But one last thing, not to change the subject too much, but I just wanted to get your quick thought on the glorification of Hummers and SUVs, especially in like the urban sort of hip hop culture. Um, I want to, I want to get your thought on the possible conspiracy theory of getting all these, all the urban, you know, mostly uh, minority groups uh, hyped up on SUVs. And now they're stuck with these gas guzzlers, gas guzzlers, and the prices are going through the roof for gas. Well, I don't think there was a conspiracy of any kind. Um, I do believe that some people probably had marketing deals. I mean, there were marketing deals for cognac and sneakers and uh, uh, a champagne. Uh, why not uh, for SUVs? True that. It was just a random idea. I was messing around, and I wanted to pass it by you. Um, you, you have to wonder how many uh, videos being made now are featuring, uh, uh, you know, those those huge Escalades and what have you. I mean, I gotta, uh, how? Because I, I know the fans can't afford them. Of course not. I got I got a prediction to make before I go. Jay Z, one of the great pioneers of hip hop, he's going to have the first uh, Tesla Roadster in his next video. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might be right. Good guess. You might be right. 1-800-5800-TOM. A group of nuts in St. Louis are praying that God will lower fuel prices. What do you think about that? Mike in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You'll be, you'll be on the Tom Like Show as soon as I press this button. Hello. All right, Tom. Hey, this is Mike. See, I pressed the button, and there you are. All right. That is awesome. I am so glad to be on your program. Are you ready to go right now? Right now. All right. So, um, yes, Portland, Oregon, man, I love that, and you're absolutely right. I don't know what the deal is up here, but they are. I know that we're talking about uh, God and stuff, but I just wanted to say the women around here, they are. There's a ton of fat ones, man. I go out of the places like down in Southern California, and the women are all beautiful. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, that aside, I do believe that those people out in St. Louis praying for lower gas prices are absolute kooks. I mean, um, I was just saying that I think that uh, they must believe that God is uh, along the same lines as Santa Claus. And By the way, let's like, point out, how many of these religious types are the ones who voted for George W. Bush, who gave us the war in Iraq, who gave us Dick Cheney, the other oil guy, and uh, who gave us high oil prices by uh, letting the dollar float downward and what have you? That's exactly probably that's probably George Bush's base is those idiots, and I have to believe that, um, you know, the, uh, the the reason George Bush is back in office is because he appealed to the lesser mentally competent folks of the world. These are the people who voted him in. Don't they say? Don't they see that he and and his administration are two of the primary reasons why gasoline prices went up? Yeah, they don't want to blame, blame George Bush. He's their man. They want to uh, they want to blame it on uh, I don't know something else. I, or at least to think that they could possibly, uh, you know, um, think that God could have anything to do with it. I mean, but that's again the mental capacity that we're dealing with uh, with those folks out in St. Louis. Yeah. What do you think about that? <laughs> well, you know what I think about this. Yes, I think I do. I, I think that, uh, and like you said, uh, I'm not I'm not an atheist, but uh, I think that it's uh, to believe that uh, you can you can uh, say a prayer and God is going to answer it with lower gas prices. That is not, I don't believe, the way that it all works. So, well, um, uh, how ironic that the people praying for God to lower gas prices are part of the reason that the gas prices went up in the first place. Not to mention how many of them drive trucks and SUVs. I absolutely and totally agree with you on many things. I would say 95% of the things I agree with you, and I listen to you all the time. Anyway, mm -hmm. Tom, it is it is so awesome to speak with you, and I don't really know what else to say except for just keep it up. I love listening to you. And, man, if you could take me out the most tasteful way that you know, which I think you do. The like, most tasteful you, uh, way? Tasteless. <laughs> oh, taste! I thought you said the most tasteful. I, I may have. <laughs> oh, the most tasteless way possible? Yes. <laughs> All right, well, if we have to go to that copter crash again, oh, my. This may be the end of this thing. 
Well, he's taken okay, off he's out. running. Okay, now it's a foot chase. Okay, now he's jumped into another vehicle. Now he's in another vehicle. vehicle. Okay, okay. Alright, they're Doors closing in. Police. Looks okay. like they've... Oh, we're we're going to pull out. We don't, we, don't, uh, we don't know what has just happened right there. Oh, boy. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Steve. Hi. I just wanted to get in on this and, um, and first of all say I think these people are barking up the wrong tree. I think um, there's nothing wrong with prayer. I actually do believe in the power of prayer. I'm not a, a fanatic, religious fanatic, but... I think they're praying for the wrong thing. I think they should be praying that the price of gas goes through the roof. And I think this, this kind of goes with your, your whole economic theory, um, and, 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 well, not your economic theory, but with an economic theory that supply and demand is what's going to control this thing. Um, I think that... It, supply and demand and a stronger dollar. Right, right. So, I mean, I do believe that if they were to pray for the price of, price of gas to go up, then, of course, people are going to start using less gas, and then we're going to have to look for, you know, more alternative um, uh, resources and to start using other, other, other means. So, well, I think the people who are protesting need to get out of their F-150s and their pickup trucks with the gun racks. Uh, they have to get out of their uh, minivans. And uh, it, instead of praying for things to get better, you have to make them better. Well, that's true. You do. And exactly that. You've got to stop looking at the president as, wow, George Bush has a third pickup. You know, I think he'd be a great guy to to, to have as our president. I mean, it's, it's just ignorance. And, and and that's, I mean, nobody could look at look at him on TV and say that, you know, this could possibly be a president of any leading country. I mean, the guy can't even speak. So, I mean, uh, you know, we've got to look at other things other than um, um, the stupidity. Of, By the way, of, speaking of, you talked about the power of prayer. Let me jump in here for a second. You know, yeah. I mean, the idea that, uh, by the way, I'm an atheist, so I don't believe yeah. in God. But the idea that if there was a God, that he'd be like the uh, spiritual equivalent of Domino's Pizza. Uh, you get down on your knees and your uh, problems will be solved in 30 minutes or less. Uh, is just, it's okay. preposterous. Uh, well, God's going to do whatever he wants. Right. And your praying isn't going to make any difference. The, the best example of this is the number of baseball players, primarily from Latin American countries, who go to the plate and they sign themselves with the sign of the cross. Like God is going to help them get a hit. Well, we don't know why they're signing themselves w with the cross. This could mean that God is going to keep. Why do them they? Alive. Why do they look up to heaven uh, right. when they get a hit and and give thanks? Right. Well, they, that was great that that is what the result was. Of but wait a minute! Prayer. Don't you think? Wait a minute! Don't you think the pitcher prayed also in many cases? Right. The what pitcher was praying was... for a strikeout. Why would God pick one believer over another? No, and I don't believe he is, but what I'm saying is I think that their prayer is directed in a more broad sense. I think that prayer is could be that, hey, the ball doesn't hit me in the head and, 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 and render me uh, brain dead. You know what I mean? The fact that I got a hit, hey, that's great, and I'm going to thank God for that. But the fact that I prayed and I got through But God this, had nothing to do with it. Well, the fact that I got through this at bat without getting beamed, you know, is... It probably because I prayed. You know what I'm but saying? But they're not. Pray that's not even what they're praying for. They're praying to get a hit. Well, I don't. I don't know. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't. You don't. Know <laughs> well, that. then they wouldn't be thanking God once they got on base. Well, they would be thanking Him to say that. Hey, they are thanking God once they got on base because God helped them get a hit. No, God helped them accomplish whatever they needed to accomplish and do it with What if the pitcher's need was to strike out the batter and he prayed for that? Well, if he is praying for that, then, you know, God is in control and God will determine whether or not this is something that, that he wants. This to... is a preposterous explanation. Oh, no, actually. Because uh, uh, Tom... this idea that God uh, sets up there going, you. You get a strikeout. You, no, you get a hit. No, is no. ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's right. And I think God is not, 
uh, you know, playing favorites with, with people, he will decide what is the proper the proper act. And the fact that we play is just in hope that he will, you know, uh, keep us playing and keep us healthy. And keep but us why playing. bother if it isn't a guaranteed result? What's the point? The point is um, uh, the power of prayer will eventually uh, lead us to achieving what we want to achieve. Really? Whether so let's say you have full-blown AIDS. Okay. What good would it do to pray? What good it will do to pray is what? it will, um, it, prayer will allow that person to come to terms with their illness, come to terms with what they can do during their time on this earth. Oh, don't you to, think people are praying that they won't die? Praying that they won't die, um, a miracle, they're praying for a miracle. And not, I mean, miracles happen. Big waste of time. How many people with AIDS have survived? Um, with AIDS, with the disease, they've lived for many Not many HIV, years. but AIDS. How many? AIDS. Um, with HIV, people live for many years. With I AIDS didn't say HIV, HIV, I said AIDS. AIDS. Well, people have lived for probably many years with AIDS. Now that there's been different types of medications that have been developed. Not for AIDS, that's for HIV. Well, you know, I, I think with full-blown AIDS, you, you're pretty much praying that uh, you're going to get your sins forgiven and you're going to do okay, you're going to be... Oh, you're, I you're gonna, you know, but I mean, you know, I, I don't, I'm not here to, to say that, uh, you know, I, that your, your beliefs are, 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 are not good and mine are... So but, when God gives you a baby whose brain was placed on the outside of his head, meaning right. that uh, it's a birth defect and the baby will die at some point, what would be right. the point of praying for that baby that God created in the first place, according to people who believe? Correct. I think the whole purpose is that God had a plan that I was supposed to deal with this situation. I see. So I God gave you the God gave you this grotesque being right. with a brain on the outside of its head, and then said, "Hey, let's see how you deal with this." Exactly. Kind of like a, like a, like a scientist in a lab with rats running through a maze. What, what will you do now that you are facing this situation? What will you do to? better the lives of other people who may have that situation in the future or what will you do to try to to try to uh to get a um a treatment or a, a cure for that situation i think that's what prayer is all about and i think people are put in situations for a reason god has a plan that's when god isn't it. busy helping vladimir guerrero get a hit sound like it 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 I support the feminists. Are you a feminist? Yes, I am. Really? Yeah, they're 100% equal to men. I don't pay for nothing. It's the Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. A bunch of morons in St. Louis are praying for God to lower gas prices. Chris off the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay, Chris. Good. Yeah, just wanted to say, you know, I just started listening to you a couple months back, and I just want to say I love your show. Thank you. Um, and about this whole gas situation, um, you guys are, you know, getting on the SUV and the, the big trucks, uh, cases a lot, you know, all these guys driving around in these big trucks that, you know, they really don't need. When a, a guy like me who I do construction, I work for myself, I, I have to have that truck. I mean, I got a, you know, a Chevy Silverado with a full utility bed and lumber rack on it and, I mean, I get like eight miles to the gallon in this thing, but it's like, it's my tool on wheels. Like, I mean, it makes my job what it is. I got No it. doubt I about it. it. Uh, no doubt about it. But you make up about one out of every ten people who owns a truck. Yeah. Uh, the, the other nine are driving to the Home Depot and picking up uh, some clothespins. <laughs> exactly. Exactly my point. Well, they're driving yeah. to Starbucks and picking up a Frappuccino. <laughs> You're 100 percent correct on that one, and I so, know a bunch of them. So I, I, I just I don't understand it, uh, and it's hard for guys like me 
you know, paying these gas prices, but I got to do it to, you know, make a living. Well, what's going to happen is guys like you are going to pass the cost on to your customers. Yep. Prices are going to go up, and yep. that's going to spur more inflation. That's yep. just that simple. Exactly, and that's exactly what I do. And I, I give these people these bills, and they're like, you know, what the, this price is ridiculous. And it's like, yeah, that's a week of me driving out to L.A. You know, I live in Huntington Beach. You know, that's me driving to L.A. every day to, you know, do the job for you. Wow. And they, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's really, it's really tough. There's a lot of people, and a lot of people right now, you know, can't afford to, you know, pay contractors to do work because their prices are going up as long, as far as materials, all materials to do the job are also going up too. And they flip on that. And it's like, you know, what do you, what do you want me to do? Do it for free? <laughs> <laughs> I understand what you're saying, Chris. You make some great points, and I, I do feel for you. Um, you are the true victims of this. Uh, the average moron who uh, drives his Eddie Bauer Edition Explorer down to Starbucks to pick up a coffee, that's not a victim. That's a moron. There's a lot of them out there. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Alex is listening to our online stream in Bothell, Washington. Alex, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Alex. Well, I gotta say, Mr. Believer there, a few minutes ago, he just annoyed the crap out of me. I mean, oh boy. I, uh, when I was, um, like a few years ago, a, a buddy was going to a Bible camp for the summer because his family's religious, and I just wanted an excuse to hang out with them, you know, male bonding, and so like, um, I went down there and I kinda had to basically sit there with my mouth shut for about a week long, and, it was kind of interesting hearing this one girl. She was talking about how she had this boyfriend that she was just totally in love with and everything, about how happy they were going to be together. And then she says that apparently he was killed in a car accident, like, before before they could get married or anything. And she said that she apparently, apparently God had uh, some kind of plan for her, and this was supposed to teach it to her. And that kind of made me do a double take, because apparently what I'm getting out of that, that's, that's something you never hear about, is, like, what about the boyfriend? I mean... It's it's like does that is that supposed to mean that God didn't really care about him like he's just no that God had a plan to make him miserable and her <laughs> exactly I mean you know it's her, her that plan, was the plan her plan was or God's plan for her was to find inner strength and for him was well the guy who killed John F Kennedy our president he had a plan too the fact that somebody has a plan doesn't mean that they, that they're good or that they have good intentions or that they're doing the right thing yeah so I mean I just. Wanted to say that. Hey, um, I actually called in a, a, a few years ago. I was one of the probably many people you've heard that um, decided to go to college on account of listening to the show. I love that. And I calling to tell you that in September classes start for me. Fantastic! What college are you going to? Western Washington University. Very nice. In fact, I was even accepted with um, distinction for academic achievement. So I mean, I'm <laughs> good for you. Really and now that you see where the economy is going, can you see why that's so important? Yeah. Because I'm going to have to be as good as I can if I want to get hired. And I can't be slacking off or anything because, you know, the slightest deficiency, and employers are going to look at that and just throw your application right out the window. You are right. <laughs> hey, Tom, since I'm from Washington here, could you take me out of em claw style? Well, I wish I could, but they always bleep it out when I do it. So what can I say? Would love to. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Luke on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Great. Um, I wanted to talk about the guy you spoke with earlier who believed in God, and, and you talked about the baseball player at the, at the mat um, holding his cross, praying to get that home run. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sick of hearing this how miracles and coincidences are all acts of God. You know, I'm an, I'm an agnostic, I'm an atheist myself. And I, I have a question for that guy, and it's, why won't God heal amputees? That's a good question. Why did God let their arms and legs get cut off? And, you know, all kinds of miracles happen all the time, and they're apparently acts of God, but when a person gets their limbs cut off, they, you know, God can't grow those back. I don't want to know why God won't heal amputees. Good question. 
<laughs> we won't we won't get an answer this hour though, unfortunately. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Brett on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay. Hey, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, yes, it is. I've been is. listening to you for a long time, and I heard I heard you the same subject not too long ago about the prayer thing, and, and you used the same reference about the, uh, the uh, Latin ball players. Yeah, and um, I went through the roof when I heard it that time, and and I just had a call in this time. I've never called into you before, um, but I think it's ridiculous when people simplify their relationship with God to the point that they think that they can pray for, you know, a base hit. Or you know, I totally agree with you on that. But I do think that prayer does have its place when it comes down to faith and whatever might get you through what you, what you may be going through. And like you were saying about somebody that might might have AIDS. You know, I do believe in the in the power of of positive thinking and whatever somebody's personal relationship with God might be, I think that that could be very powerful if it, if it's You mean deluding yourself into thinking things are getting better will help you get better? Well, I you know, I don't I wouldn't say that. I think that you have to take you have to take action. You have to take Two, two steps forward, you know, you, you have to, you have to meet the situation in the middle. Because I, I can tell you that, um, when I look up into the sky at night, or if I look at the mountains, or if I look at anything on this planet, even another person, I can't explain how that was created, and I don't know what that might be. But I do know that, you know, I think that, you know, if you go into a situation, you know, uh, whether it be, you know, getting up to bat if you're a baseball player or, or something far more serious, and you are on the positive. But you understand that most people who pray, they yeah. don't do everything they can to help themselves. Uh, many times they do absolutely nothing. And they do I use agree. God like he's Domino's Pizza. Uh, they're, you know, they're hoping that money will be delivered to the front door or that uh, better jobs are coming along. Uh, are they going to college? Are they working as many hours as they can? In most cases, no. No, I, I not at all. And I think it's, it's kind of... Uh, 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 What's, I, can't, I, I can't even think of the word, of, but it's a very simple way of thinking. And I think too much of the world is based in that way of thinking that they can just uh, hit their knees if they do hit their knees and pray for something to happen and just wait for it to happen. You have to make things happen, and you have to believe. But that in that case, prayer is irrelevant. Uh, take me, for example. Everything I've wanted in life has happened without having to pray to some imaginary being. Right. Well, no, that's good. that's great for you, and 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 I don't discount that. But it happened because I busted my ass. Yeah. Praying wouldn't have made it happen any faster, or make me any more successful than I am. And I think that's your personal experience, and I don't take anything away from that. I, I think, think it would be everybody's personal experience if they merely tried it. Absolutely, but I also I also believe that you know. Uh, you know, there there has been a reason in 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 our history as human beings to have religion because a lot of people yes, know it's the to control the masses. The, the purpose of religion is to control, control the, masses. the masses. Absolutely, I agree with that. The purpose of it is my, that 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 there's a spiritual side of religion that 99 percent of the people in the world aren't in touch with at all. And and I think that if your if your relationship well, there you go. So those 99 percent, you just give up. Well, let me ask you this, Tom. I'm just curious. Do you believe that that there is a power in the universe greater than yourself? I mean, no. that might be a stupid question. I, know I I'm don't. To you, but I'm just curious. I don't. You don't. No. Okay. Well, you know, I, I, I personally believe that that you know that my soul and the souls of everybody else in this world exist also on a higher level. And if I try to get in touch with that, and I believe, and I have faith in myself, and 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 my prayer has to do more with strength and then my action. If 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 I'm going through a crisis or something in my life or something's going on. Oh, I can't take it anymore. Our email address: Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.